every once in a while, a revolutionary product comes along that changes everything. The first new feature uh, is that we're going to rename it. Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today, we are embarking on an epic journey through the evolution of iOS. From its humble beginnings as iPhone OS 1.0 to the cutting edge advancements of Apple intelligence, we will explore the coolest features, groundbreaking updates and even some of its fails. This is a story about almost two decades of continuous iOS evolution. Sit back, relax, hit the subscribe button and let's get started. Let's begin with the foundation of the iOS we know today, the original iPhone OS, released in 2007. This OS introduced us to the revolutionary multi-touch interface and the iconic grid of apps on the home screen. Interestingly, when the iPhone was initially released, there was no official name for its operating system. Steve Jobs simply stated, iPhone runs OS X. A revolutionary user interface. We're going to build on top of that with software. Now software on mobile phones is like, it's like baby software. It's not so powerful. And today we're going to show you a software breakthrough. Software that's at least five years ahead of what's on any other phone. Now how do we do this? Well we start with a strong foundation. iPhone runs OS X. Yeah. The iPhone OS also introduced the classic skeuomorphism design concept, where elements in user interface are designed to resemble their real-world counterparts in appearance and functions. For example, the Notes app is designed to look like an actual notebook. Although basic by today's standards, the iPhone OS 1 set the stage for mobile computing as we know it. With apps like phone, mail and music, iPhone OS redefined what a smartphone could be. The first version of the iPhone OS was so basic that it didn't even have the copy-paste feature. Do you remember the excitement of sliding to unlock for the first time? In 2008, iPhone OS 2 introduced the App Store, a groundbreaking marketplace that unlocked the potential for third-party applications. This huge update revolutionized the iPhone, transforming it into a versatile and entertaining device. The App Store opened an infinite array of possibilities at your fingertips. Moreover, enhancement to stability and performance further solidified the iPhone's reliability. It also introduced push email, allowing for real-time email notifications. Contact search made finding people in your address book easier iPhone OS 2 was the moment when iPhone really started to flex its muscles as a platform. However, it still lacked a copy-paste feature. In 2009, iOS 3 introduced features we can't live without today. Copy and paste, MMS for multimedia messaging, and Spotlight Search for finding information quickly. The Voice Memos app also made its debut, turning iPhones into handy recording devices. The iPhone OS 3 also brought push notifications for the first time. This update also brought the ability to buy and rent movies directly on the device, turning the iPhone into a portable entertainment center. With these improvements, iPhone OS 3 significantly boosted productivity and communication capabilities. It's quite amusing to know that the copy-paste feature was previously accessible only through jailbreaking. iPhone OS 4! the most advanced mobile operating system in the world. Now, the first new feature uh, is that we're going to rename it. iOS 4 in 2010 was all about multitasking. For the first time, users could switch between apps without losing their place, thanks to the fast app switcher. This version also introduced us to the game center and brought folder capabilities to organize apps. And with the iPhone 4 Retina display, visuals became sharper than ever, elevating the user experience drastically. FaceTime made its debut, revolutionizing how we communicate with video calls. And let's not forget the introduction of personal hotspot, turning our iPhones into mobile Wi-Fi routers. By the way, with the introduction of iOS 4, Apple finally changed its naming from iPhone OS to iOS and kept this change until today. 2011 saw the arrival of iOS 5, bringing two major game-changing features, 
the Notification Center, which streamlined notifications in one place, and iCloud, a revolutionary service that synced content across all Apple devices seamlessly. We also got iMessage for free texting between Apple devices and Siri, the personal digital assistant. In 2012, Apple introduced iOS 6, which marked a significant shift in the iPhone experience. Apple Maps replaced Google Maps as the default navigation application. Passbook, now Wallet, introduced a convenient way to store tickets and loyalty cards. Facebook integration made sharing easier than ever. The Do Not Disturb feature helped us manage notifications during quiet times. And let's not forget about the redesigned App Store, making app discovery more intuitive. The iOS 6 introduced over 200 new features and improvements. This was the most stable and visually appealing mobile operating system in the world. Perhaps the most infamous iOS fail was the introduction of Apple Maps in iOS 6. Replacing Google Maps was a huge mistake. Apple's solution had a lot of errors, including misplaced landmarks, distorted images, and incorrect directions. The fiasco was so severe that CEO Tim Cook had to issue a public apology, and it reportedly led to the departure of Scott Forstall, then iOS chief. iOS 7 in 2013 brought a complete redesign overhaul with flat icons and a bright color palette, making the most significant visual transformation since the iPhone's debut. Control Center made its first appearance, offering quick access to essential settings. AirDrop for iOS made sharing between Apple devices easier than ever. It is also the first iOS version to run 64-bit apps. This was, so far, the most significant change in iOS history. The iOS 7 design remained largely unchanged until now. While iOS 7 redesign was generally well received, it wasn't without issues. The new parallax effect and zooming animation caused motion sickness for some users. Additionally, many reported significant battery drain issues after upgrading, especially on older devices. Personally, I prefer the old-style iOS design. The skeuomorphic elements introduced with the iPhone simply looked much better. Skeuomorphism is when digital elements resemble real items, for example, when the Notes app resembles an old pad, while the YouTube app looks like a TV. It was so much better than modern flat icons. Like the video if you like iOS 6 icons. Hashtag bring back skeuomorphism to iOS 19. In 2014, iOS 8 focused on refining the iOS experience. Features like Handoff allowed seamless transition between iOS and Mac devices. The Health app centralized fitness and health data. Predictive text in QuickType keyboard speed up typing. Third-party keyboards brought more variety to text input. And the ability to reply to notifications directly from the banner added convenience. However, the iOS 8 0.1 in 2014 was so problematic that Apple had to pull it in without hours of release. It caused issues with cellular services and Touch ID on iPhone 6 and 6 Plus, essentially breaking core phone functionality for many users. Apple quickly released iOS 8 0.2 to fix these issues, but not before it became a major PR headache. In 2015, iOS 9 focused on performance, battery efficiency, and intelligence. Siri became more proactive, offering app suggestions before you even typed. Split-screen multitasking came to the iPad, transforming it into a more powerful productivity tool. The news app made its debut, offering a new way to stay informed with personalized articles. Low power mode helped extend battery life when needed. Interesting fact. The iOS 9 finally killed the iPhone 4S. It was so sluggish and laggy that using the device became almost impossible. This was the worst iOS update ever, at least from my perspective. iOS 10 in 2016 brought a major update to messages, making it more interactive with rich links, stickers and animations. The Home app unified smart home controls, allowing users to manage all their smart devices in one place. Raise to Wake brought a subtle yet significant improvement, making it easier to access your phone on the go. The Photos app gained object and scene recognition, 
and the lock screen became more functional with rich notifications and widgets. Overall, it was a good update, but there was one change I did not like. The iconic swipe to unlock gesture was gone. It was replaced by pressing the home button. I hated this change. In 2017, the iOS 11 was a leap forward with the introduction of ARKit, bringing augmented reality capabilities to the iPhone and iPad. iOS 11 was all about productivity, especially for iPad users. The Files app finally brought a proper file management system to iOS. Drag and drop functionality made moving content between apps easier. The App Store got a complete redesign, focusing on app discovery, do not disturb while driving, improved safety on the road, and the control center became customizable, allowing users to add their most used toggles. iOS 11 was mainly developed for the iconic iPhone X, and it introduced modern iOS gestures. iOS 12 in 2018 focused on performance improvements, especially on older devices. Screen time was introduced to help users monitor and manage their device usage, promoting digital well-being. Group FaceTime enabled video calls with up to 32 participants, making it easier to connect with multiple friends and family members. iOS 12 was one of the most stable, or should I say, the most stable modern iOS after iOS 6. Unfortunately, with the introduction of more and more useless features in future iOS updates, the operating system has transformed into a buggy and garbage software, as we know it today. iOS 13, released in 2019, brought some long-awaited features. Dark mode finally arrived, giving users a system-wide dark appearance option. The Photos app got a major overhaul with new editing tools and curated view of your library. The Reminders app was redesigned with more powerful features, and the new swipe keyboard made one-handed typing easier than ever. iOS 13 also marked a split between iOS and iPadOS, making them two separate operating systems, although it's still pretty much the same thing. In 2020, iOS 14 reimagined the home screen. Widgets could now be placed among app icons. The app library automatically organized apps into categories. Picture-in-picture -picture mode allowed video playback while using other apps. App Clips provided fast, no install access to app features when needed. I've never used the app library. I still prefer manually organizing my apps. After all, I am the boss here. I am the one deciding how I want to organize my apps. In 2021, iOS 15 prioritized enhancing communications and focus. FaceTime received significant improvements. Additionally, focus modes allowed users to customize notifications based on their current activities. Live text recognized text and images, making it interactive. The weather app got a beautiful redesign with more detailed information, and enhanced privacy features gave users more control over their data. In 2022, iOS 16 brought more personalization to iOS. The lock screen become customizable with widgets and new font options. The iCloud shared photo library made sharing family photos easier. Messages gained the ability to edit and unsend recent messages. The fitness app became available to all users, not just Apple Watch owners, and pass keys began to replace traditional passwords for more secure sign-ins. I was always a big fan of simplicity and efficiency, and I absolutely hated the customization options of the home screen. At this moment, I felt like iOS was transforming into colorful garbage for primary school students. iOS 16 was also extremely buggy, at least in my case. In 2023, the iOS 17 introduced interactive widgets, allowing users to perform actions directly from the widget without opening the app. The standby mode turned your iPhone into a smart display when charging, displaying useful information like time, calendar, and widget data. AirDrop improvements, including the ability to share content by just tapping phones together. iOS 17 was a very stable system. The iOS 18 introduced dark style icons and even more customizable control center. Finally, iOS 18 in 2024 brought advanced AI integration throughout the system, making Siri more intuitive and contextually aware. Apple introduced its own AI model, called Apple Intelligence, 
When I first heard of this naming, I thought it's a joke. Apple is the only company in the world capable of calling AI Apple Intelligence. Can you imagine Amazon creating a product called Amazon Intelligence? Well, I'm a huge fan of Apple Intelligence and I found it very useful. However, I didn't like the new control center and dark icons. I don't know why. Everything is messed up. Some icons are white while others are black. It looks terrible. Apple Intelligence includes advanced writing tools that are powered by AI, including rewrite and proofread. By the way, I'm already using these features when writing this text. Apple Intelligence can also be used to generate images on device with the Image Playground app. Users can also create original Genmoji images by typing descriptions. Another useless feature for primary school kids. Siri, Apple's virtual assistant, has been updated with enhanced capabilities made possible by Apple Intelligence. Unfortunately, Apple Intelligence is limited only to the latest iPhone 15 Pro models and future, more expensive iPhones. So if you have a regular iPhone 15 or 14 Pro, you can already throw it into the garbage. If you want Apple Intelligence, you need to buy a new iPhone. And there you have it, the incredible journey of iOS from its day one to the cutting edge Apple Intelligence. It's fascinating to see how far we've come in just 18 years from basic phone functions to having powerful AI computers in our pockets. Which iOS version was your favorite? What features do you hope to see in future updates? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Peace. Tell me a joke. I thought I spilled coffee all over my keyboard. But it turns out, it's all under control. Tell me a joke. How should you address an alligator in a vest? Investigator. <laughs>